Aegon Targaryen is no true king, just as you are no true knight. You're both craven, little drugs! <laughs> you wouldn't dare. I swear on my feminine face. So three is crazy. There's so much of significance that happens here and it's more about the politics. But there's one specific part that people are talking about on Twitter and it's the only part that matters. <laughs> what in the gnome kind of laugh was that? <laughs> Now, I know everyone's gonna say that this guy deserves to have his brother betray him for what he did for embarrassing him like this in front of everyone, but how many siblings actually for real do this and haze each other like this? I swear to God, I've seen some brothers and they're the freaking worst. Those people are hanging. Those thread people. Is anybody but me getting skeeved out by the the thread intro? It just looks like ske- Look at it. It looks like freaking worms and maggots praising the Lord or something. I don't know. It just skeeves me out. Ugh. So we've got this person with the most androgynous face I have ever seen. And they're fighting over land. Clearly, the two houses had some many generational, multi-generational feud. And each of them supports either one of the siblings. These guys support Rhaenyra while androgynous guy supports Aegon because he thinks Rhaenyra is a babe killer. So clearly they start what would become a bloody battle in the name of their respective idols. I feel like people are like this on Twitter all the time. And at least this is like real world problems in this situation, this universe. But still, very horrible. They have a burial for the twins. I wonder if these guys are actually twins in real life. CGI's gotten so good nowadays. They died for no reason. And this whole episode is basically the women not not wanting to go to war. The men are war hungry and the women must stop this from happening. And they have a point because once dragons start fighting, that's it. And I don't know why I took so much joy in this part. It seems as though the other knights don't respect Cole. They didn't even want to stand up for him. It must look very weird. He's the king's guard, then overnight he becomes the hand of the king, replacing the dude that has served three kings. I thought he only served one before, but no, he served three kings. Three. How old is Otto Hightower? I understand why the optics of it would look very weird. And you can see the knights here, they're like laughing at him. Like nobody respects this bitch and good. I know some of you were making fun like, you know, well, the dude is a badass. He's a lowborn person, rises through the ranks by being a badass, best warrior in the realm, that's still to be decided, hooks up with the king's daughter, gets away with it, casually beats up some guy to de death and gets away with it, gets promoted to the head of Kingsguard just because, casually kills some dude in the council chambers to get away with it just because, gets to smash the queen on a regular basis, sends some guy to his death on a whim, king makes you hand just because, gets to sleep with the queen some more, more like Sir Chad, remind me why people hate this guy so much? It's funny cause it's true, but that's exactly the reason people hate him. Let's be honest, if this asshole had been a woman, everyone would have been calling her a Mary Sue, which is also just as repugnant. That's why we hate him. So now his dumb ass is sitting at the council and Allison like challenges him because she knows more than he does. I mean, he knows about battle and stuff too, so I will give him that. Sir Arik was awarded the great Duke Kingsguard, your grace. To replace those we lost. The last one needlessly, some might say. Said the last one needlessly, some might say. I like that dig at Cole because he did send that guy to die for no freaking reason. Sir Arik was awarded the great duty of ending Rhaenyra's challenge. He failed to discharge it. <laughs> Alice's face, like, and this guy puts his freaking dick inside me and I let him? Good lord have mercy. I'm so embarrassed and nobody even knows and I really want it to stay that way because you disgust me. No accountability, no responsibility whatsoever. He'd make a great politician. His challenge, he failed to discharge it. He failed because the scheme was rash. Perhaps, Your Grace, but we cannot all hide in our castles waiting for war to come to us. As now it surely will. You know, this whole thing started because people don't know how to discipline their kids. If she had a better handle on Aemon bullying the other kids, this wouldn't have happened. Lucerus wouldn't have felt the need to defend the others. If Lucerus had also been disciplined for raising his sword and maiming Aemon, this wouldn't have happened. If Aemon hadn't gone after Lucerus and killed him with his dragon, this wouldn't have happened. Rhaenyra wouldn't have felt the need to exercise 
exercise her rage, which she didn't even want to do, and Damon was hurt by this as well, and he wouldn't have gone to try and get Aemon, subsequently causing the little boy to be killed, which now causes Aegon to want to retaliate, which is what Rhaenys was saying, that by the time this war starts, nobody will know what they're fighting for. But at the same time, you've got this situation, and if nobody does anything, the other side looks weak, and there's just blood waiting to be spilled regardless, because nobody's really answering for anything. Then, Lord Grover Tully is a flaccid old fool who can control his cock and a cunny. Where are they getting these sayings from? It's like, it's like the butcher from the boys. I'm getting blamed for the murder you did. I'll call you a cunt, but you ain't got the depth for the warmth. Ah, the great military mind of the Citadel. Do I remind me which link you have chained to the of war. This council must rediscover the discipline. It lately has been to be of any use. The Riverlands are the key to the war. Harrod Hall is the key to the Riverlands. I will ride out with those I can muster here, men I know, men are trained. You need time to raise the numbers to challenge the Rivermen. Speed is my ally. I will turn the Crown land houses who declared for a nearer to our cause. We will add their numbers to our own and then turn west, or I will enlist the Brackens, subdue the Riverlands, and take Harrenhal. <sighs> I don't know why I'm praying so much for this person's downfall. I can't stand him. His mouth looks like it's not fully developed. Look at it, just sitting on his face like a baby bird's asshole waiting to be pinched so it can swell up to its normal size. So impatient to ride with so few men. So like to be destroyed by the first stronghold you meet. A bold scheme indeed. Well, the gods favor the bold. They did not favor Sir Eric. <laughs> what say you, my king? Did he just scoff? You know what that was, right? That was bilch. If your son wasn't the king, I would skull f you in front of this whole council. You wanna see how good I am with a sword? Open your mouth one more time. That's why he didn't even look at her. And it's the look on Allison's face when she realizes she has absolutely no control over this man. And of course, because you've given him all four of the cow tits, several gallons a night or day or forever, 24 seven with no pay. At this point, he's getting more out of this deal than you are. I really hope that when Aegon finds out that this dude is screwing his mother, that he stuffed Sir Colin up his dragon's cloaca. What say you, my king? And you'll take Aemon and Vagar. Vagar will remain here to defend the city. Good. To war then. I'll come too with Sunfire. Egon. Your grace. You'll lead a dragon. My plan is not to draw attention. And, and what will you do if you encounter one or more of Rhaenyra's dragons? She'll want to answer for Sir Arik. Those are very good questions. And while it's good morale, leaving yourself open with no air it doesn't seem like a very good idea. The king can take a lot more liberties with airing out his spine when he has someone to cover the throne, but he doesn't. To encounter one if we field one of our own. That is precisely why you must remain, brother. It's a brave thought. But we cannot risk your loss. I'm as fearsome as any of them. The way the dude took a sip of his drink, that's the universal expression for no comment and let me fill my mouth with something to prevent me from having to comment. I was told you turned back from your ship to bring warning. I was not believed at first. You saved my life. What is the life of a queen worth these days? You wish to be rewarded. As I would think, you would wish to reward me. Dude, this woman is so freaking brave. Had it been anybody else, her head would have been bobbing in the middle of the ocean. That's a pretty good comeback, though. Like, if someone saves your life and your life is worth a lot because you're the most valuable person in the entire realm, but yet you wouldn't even think to reward someone, that's a perfect answer for someone who asks you if you wish for a reward. I mean, on one hand, you know, if you keep this girl happy, she'll be fine, but if someone outpays her, you can't trust this woman. She worked for your enemies, strictly to benefit her own good, which can be a good thing, but can also be a bad thing. What if she's being paid by both of you and she's playing both of you? As I would think, you would wish to reward me. What price would you set? A place at your court. At my court? You? A whore that my husband wanted to marry? Are you asking for me to feed you to my dragons? Lofty heights for such a wide leg spreader. The good news is, I guess, is that this woman wants to get back at the high towers who made her an enemy. The bad news is the dragons are getting restless because they can sense that there is war coming. How do the dragons even know this? Have many of them lived through wars enough to know when one's coming? Do they just have a tie with their riders? If this dragon was the dragon of the guy that everyone thinks is dead, that Rhaenyra was married to, the, the gay one, does he still have a connection with his human even though his human is far away and getting his back blown out? Oh my god. Hold on. 
hold on. Let me, let me cook. Uh, so I have a question and I know, I know you guys hate my questions, but I have to ask. If a rider is getting his or her cheeks clapped, does the dragon feel its cheeks being clapped too? The fuck you say? I mean, nobody else is asking these questions, so I don't think it's too above grade to voice them. If you reach the pinnacle of pleasure, does a dragon feel it or does it just like sit in its cave and think to itself, man, my rider is feeling really good right now and I'm so exceedingly happy for them. Or do they just like feel it at the time you're feeling it? And do they feel it in a similar way that you feel it? Do they feel it go in when you feel it go in? These are legitimate questions. Dragons can sense when you're scared when you're sad so I mean it's to be expected that they would feel all those other things right or is it just the mind like even if it's just the mind and not the body that euphoric feeling you get from getting high off of love making alcohol drugs whatever will will the dragon get high off that as well is it like a mental connection I didn't read the book so I welcome the spoilers personally for those answers and yes, I, I am legitimately asking I want them because I know everybody asked about the whole Navi thing and that was freaking confusing when you consider that the thing that they seem to use to do it with each other, they also do it for the animals as well, which is freaking, yeah. Taraxes is for the hatchling. And Stormcloud, I want you to go with them. The Red Keep is in disarray. They have sent one assassin in the night and their dragons are ever a short flight away. You must take the little ones further. To Pentos, I think. When my mother died. It is safer than anywhere in Westeros. Doesn't this girl look like a young female version of Grey Worm? Like, their heads are the same. And their complexion and the way their face is set. She's so adorable, but I kind of feel bad for her. <laughs> she still, she has to go away and babysit them kids. I feel you, girl. I know exactly how you feel. And she wants to help and be a part of everything, but she's designated as the nanny, essentially. Call me crazy, but I would prefer the half-sibling to watch over my babies who actually wants to watch over them. I mean, I imagine that nobody would want to, but if she smothers them in the middle of the night because she's not equipped to deal with this, would anybody be surprised? Look at the fa look at her face. She looks as though Renera just asked her to jump off a cliff onto some spiky rocks below and then have acid poured on her. I know it's not opportune, but Jesus Christ, they're your half brothers. You should be glad to help in any way you can and you don't even have a dragon. I mean, the woman that she's staying with is gonna have a dragon or, or they're apparently getting giving her a dragon too in return for all of this. And she gets some eggs that I know people are speculating very well might be Danny's eggs, but there are four of them, four. Interesting, because there's a green one, a red one, and a yellow one, which would match with the colors, but then there's that fourth one. Then we look at Daenerys Targaryen's eggs, and we see that they're pretty much the same colors. We've got the green one here, the green one here, the gold one here, the gold one here, the red one here, and what looks to be the dark petrified red one here, which would be Drogon's. Then that begs the question, what is this blue one? They're very fragile and they foreshadow that. So the blue one that hatches might be the one that she ends up getting and bonding with. This is one of the smartest things that Rhaenyra could do, send her babies away. Anyway, you'll be all right, leaving your family, going someplace completely new. <sighs> that must be messed up, but your sister's only a dragon flight away. So you're not gonna be completely alone. I feel like if Caraxes was human, he would be that very tall and slender, edgy, punk rock Adonis. All the girls would wanna have him, but he doesn't wanna be tied down to one person. He'd be like a sex god, a full on sensual dude full of that metro masculinity, like a freaking vampire. Interesting, just like his daddy Damon. I'm claiming Harrenhal. Apparently so. Anybody else but me get anxiety when people try to be snarky with these sociopaths? I'm expecting Damon to be all like, don't get it twisted, Grams. I'll chop off your head and use you as the Kentucky Fried Chicken logo. I, Sir Simon Strong, Castellan of Harrenhal, pledge fealty to Rhaenyra of House Targaryen, first of her name. I swear this by the old- One in the Adams family. Oh God. Please, Damon, do not screw this Minecraft textured woman. That's a woman, right? Bro's face is stretched. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, check out that maw. Dude looks like Stonehenge. Is this real? I think it's just, no, wait, okay. One person over here looks like a freaking cinder block. 
The other person <laughs> looks like one half of a pair of shoes standing on the tip. And people are the most, people are talking about there's no diversity. Can you check this out? These are two white people. Look at that. One is an oval, like an actual true oval. Not the one where it's an egg and you can't really tell unless you look at it and scrutinize it. Full on stretched out elliptical thing. The other one is a perfect freaking square. Tell me that's not diverse. Monolith where? If aliens came to earth and they saw these two people, they would think that they're two different species. It's like looking at a pelican and an owl. Summon your Lord Paramount so that I may treat with him myself and turn them to our cause. That would be Lord Grover Tully, but he grows frail. It's said that he can no longer speak, nor seal his bowels. Begging your pardon for the impression. His grip on his bannerman is weak. They feel they can do as they please. I will speak with him nonetheless. People should obey their liege lord, whatever his condition. Perhaps the presence of the crown and a dragon We'll sharpen minds around these parts. I love the way he says that. Sharpen the mind around these parts. Okay, and say it like that, but I don't know, that part was very sweet because we all know he's talking about Viserys, his late brother. And I think for all the bad things that Damon's done, he definitely has a soft spot for family. I mean, you know, clearly, since he's like fucking his niece. Edward together, even briefly. So Kristen, may I present my brother, Sir Gwen Hightower, arrived last night from Elton. So Kristen. Mayhaps, I should say. My Lord Han. So, when? Welcome to King's Landing. How exhilarating to arrive at court after three long months on the road to find my Lord Father, who served three kings faithfully, unseated as Han the King. And by a man from such modest beginnings. The shade is real, though. <laughs> and I'm so angry right now because why does sir Kristen look so cute right here maybe it's because he cut his hair or something or he's doing the stupid light skin boy look with the squinting eyes and puckering lips that he doesn't have modest beginnings damn he called you poor in the most disrespectful way i like how rich people know how to insult you without insulting you but you know it's an insult like it's like when people see you with these shoes on and maybe they're not brand shoes which i don't know why people care about that stuff let's say they're not brand shoes and there's some knockoff and the person's like man you wearing them shoes though and they do that look okay this is not what i was looking for but i was looking for like the i don't know pucker out mouth look i you know what i'm talking about it's not this though this is like the opposite of that so imagine like this but in like reverse hmm. what a giddying ascent the gods have bestowed on you Sir Gawain has volunteered to accompany you into battle. I like how he, I like how he looks at her as the like, this is the worst possible thing that could have happened to him. You know how awkward this might be? Like he's screwing the king's mother. He's now responsible for, and has to somewhat trust the king's brother who obviously does not like him because he probably suspects that this guy is screwing his sister. And additionally, it's clear that this guy to the brother has unseated his father from a position that he's held for three generations of three kings or whatever it is they said. This guy, colon, just keeps making all these right decisions that seem to be building up to everyone hating him or him falling on his own sword, which is of his making. Ironically, he was about to do just that before he switched allegiances to Alicent's side. And now I'm, I'm betting he's probably wishing that he did. I don't know why he's so angry. Everything is being handed to him just because. No one is more delighted than I to march out to war with the Dornishman. Sister. This dude looks like he wants to be anywhere but here right now. He sure knows how to do that passive aggressive thing that he does that so well. There's some people who just speak like that. I had a friend that was passive aggressive about everything. It was actually hilarious. That was just his personality. But I can't even blame her brother for not liking him. He's definitely gonna have to earn his respect. May the seven guide you. Good night. And lead you not into shadow and death. I thank your grace for her prayers. And request that she grant her favor. That her Lord Commander may go into battle with her blessings in his heart. Your grace. If I'm 
reading the body language and facial expressions right, she's disgusted by him and angry, but also expects her brother to keep an eye on him, while Sir Colon doesn't see her as an equal and wants her respect, but is growing tired of her challenging him and putting more pressure on him. Likewise, because he's screwing her, he's probably thinking, well, you know what? I want people to know. I don't want to be another dirty secret anymore because I'm above that. I'm not your sidekick whore. So that's what I'm thinking the favor means because from other shows that I've watched, the favor usually means somebody that the knight likes or respects or admires. So usually the king, like in the Tudors, he would ask for the queen's favor. Nobody else's, just the queen's because that's his lady. And then when he started screwing around with the other bitches, he started asking them for their favors. And the queen was like, really? Like right in front of her too. That was so disrespectful. So that's what I feel is going on here. Okay. I just just looked it up. A lady's favor is a token bestowed upon a knight in support of him or upon a man whom the lady in question bestowed her affection. <gasps> oh no. Ooh, that's a new word for me. Has, has to lewd? Has to lewd? It was usually a publicly given garland or a piece of cloth bound on a knight's arm or on their lance, something visible. In general, it could be any trinket of importance. Oh wow, it was for the Reddit thing for <laughs> Also here, it says, ladies would give knights an item of personal importance, a piece of jewelry, a trinket, or token of some sort, on the promise that he will give it back to her when he returns from the joust alive. So yeah, this whole thing, he did that on purpose so that people around could publicly see that this is his bitch. That's what that was. That was his way of taking control of the situation because he was Renera's secret and he's like, you know what? Uh, so if I come back, I want people to know that my affection, that your affection is for me. You could tell also when he <laughs> looks around, he says it loud so people can hear, and people are watching in the background trying to mind their business. Okay, and I'm watching the body language. Okay, he, she, he takes it from her and notice how he puts his thumb on her finger. That's a sign of affection. Okay, so maybe he's not totally mad at her. Oh, the brother sees it. Oh, no. Knows the guy on the horse too, trying to be all slick. Like, oh, what? Did I just, is that the queen and the hand? And people are looking, oh no, this is, Laris is back there. I didn't even notice that the first time around. <gasps> Ooh, but he probably already knew. He probably knew the queen was doing something with someone, but he probably didn't know it was him. Or maybe he did. Maybe he did because he is the person of whispers, right? You see him watching the... I didn't even notice until I just now did this. I didn't even notice him standing there watching the whole time. The knights are watching above there, here and there. Oh my God. The girl is what? Everybody is watching. Yeah. Everyone now knows you guys are fucking good job. And if she didn't give it, oh my God. I love how you can look at establishing shots like this and completely forget that this is all a matte painting. This is almost entirely CGI. At least I'm guessing it is. And not long into the future, we'll have the ability to generate whole scenes like this or basically whole TV shows just using AI software and only voice actors, which we probably won't even need because we'll be able to generate those as well. The only thing we'll need are people to write story. Oh wait, no, the AI can do that too. We don't need people to write stories. Okay, so we'll just need people to refine it. Oh, but AI can do that as well. Maybe people to cons compose the music, but AI can do that already. At the most, what people will be known for is what prompt they happen to use that put all this together. Oh, but don't worry, there's an AI for even generating prompts to do that as well. I'm not being cheeky. Everything I've mentioned actually currently exists at the time of this video. People in the future probably watching this video like, okay, yeah, and <laughs> what are you, ancient? No, I'm probably dead. There has been no word from Prince Damon, your grace. Then we must press what advantage we do have. And what is that? Dragons, send them all out. Start turning green strongholds to our cause and burn those who resist. No. If dragons begin fighting dragons, we invite our own destruction. Fear of it is in itself a weapon. The greens will make the same calculation. <laughs> the value of a sword is not within its scabbard. <sighs> you see, mm, if that had been Daenerys Targaryen, that man would not have even tried that. She would have given him that look and Khaleesi would have only given him one warning. One before she let him outside, making him think that he was going on some mission only for Drogon to land in front of him and her to announce that because he wasn't wise enough to know when to shut his damn mouth, now he will never speak again. You hold the whip. Zadrizes buzdaris kos daor. Zadrizes 
She would only need to set one example for people to be quickly reminded that she's the one with the dragons. You will not kneel? I already have a queen. My sister. She wasn't your queen until recently, though, was she? When she murdered your rightful queen and destroyed House Tyrell for all time. So it appears your allegiances are somewhat flexible. There are no easy choices in war. I gave them a choice. They made it. Your grace, if you stop beheading entire I'm families... I'm not beheading anyone. Your grace. Tarly, Dick and Tarly. I, Daenerys of House Targaryen, first of my name, breaker of chains and mother of dragons, sentence you to die. Dracarys. It's not dead. We obviously didn't communicate clearly. We had to discuss your surrender, not mine. I imagine it's difficult. Adjusting to the new reality. Your reign is over. My reign has just begun. me safe conduct i did but my dragons made no promises and you threatened their mother it sucks that you have to be that way with people but people really do try you she's the queen and you're her counsel yes but you're going to outwardly disrespect and scoff at her in front of everybody they didn't even talk to viserys like this and understandably they're going to come at it from the angle of oh she's a woman so that's why they don't respect her these people though in this universe are not used to having a woman on the throne or in power and so naturally even though they may stand behind Rhaenyra, she's a means to an end and they don't entirely respect her because they believe She's still below her station because she's a woman. What does she know? The value of a sword is not within its scabbard. We will secure victory with armies, not with dragons alone. Y you see the way that Rainey's looked at him? <laughs> she was like, bitch, watch that mouth of yours. I guarantee you that if she were the queen, she would have launched that guy out the window. Okay, violence is not always the answer. But they, they should at least get one warning to mind themselves. Only one warning. And then they should be made an example of because these are the kind of people, if they do not respect or fear you, they will quickly turn on you. We must give Damon time. Uh, Your Grace, you have witnessed firsthand just how vulnerable you are. Prince Damon is abroad, and Egan's factions are enraged at the death of his son. You have never been so exposed. Perhaps it is time for you to think about secreting yourself somewhere safe, 
while we remain here as a source of distraction for the enemy. He proposed to conduct the war in my absence. It, it would merely be a precaution. It would be treason. You are fortunate you took it no further. That's what she's going to have to do. She's teetering between the ultra kind heartedness of her father and the late king and being a ruler worthy of respect and fear. People usually love more what they fear. It's stupid, but it's true. And it's human psychology. As much as they may hate someone or not agree with everything that person stands for, they will usually respect someone who shows strength rather than someone who displays weakness. At some point, Renera is going to have to display a big show of strength. You even see this now in like the dating pool or just human life in general. Like for example, women with men and men with other men if a woman sees that a man is weak she won't respect him she'll say oh i want a nice person who's super sweet and will always go with me everywhere and always put me in front of him and tell people you know this is my woman and see how beautiful she is she'll say she wants that but she will not respect him long term she'll come around a guy and this guy will not give two shits about her he'll be like yeah i'm handsome and uh okay you're beautiful and so are like millions of other women and they'll be like oh you're so misogynistic and he'll be like yeah and bye bitch and they'll be like oh he makes me so mad i want to fuck him and fix him and then they'll do that and they won't fix him and then he'll ghost them and then they'll go on tiktok and cry oh my god he ghosted me men are so awful but then she'll like constantly try to call him and when he's like hey you want to fuck and it's been like months she'll be like yeah and then he'll ghost her again and then she'll beat herself up wondering why she keeps on making the same stupid decision over and over again. I can't tell you how many of those videos I've watched with women like that. I know women like that, but they'll cheat on the man at home who's nice to them and super sweet and always agreeable because women and men do not respect weakness. And a lot of people mistake kindness for weakness. So Renera is going to have to have some show of strength. Notice how they bow down. They did the same thing to Khaleesi. And as soon as she started burning people and she used her dragon, they were like, ooh. As soon as they saw she couldn't be burned by fire, they were like, ooh. And she always had to constantly remind them when they forgot. And it's been a while since she's shown that strength to remind them, even though she's a freaking dragon, that she had to remind them she had a dragon. Like, it's just so weird. But that's human beings for you. This council would do well to remember that their queen wears the crown of my grandsire, Jaehaerys the Conciliator, a prudent ruler, the wisest of Targaryen kings whose reign outlasted every other, even Aegon the Conqueror's. Ah, uh, yeah, and you'll hag. Yeah, she ain't him. Huh. Women. Ha! And why do I feel like there's a bunch of foreshadowing going on with something happening to Corlys? I love Jaehaerys, but my concern has been more for you and what you have endured. Helena, I... I forgive you. What? I said that I forgive you. For what, my dear child? For being a whore! <laughs> Drink some soap! One thing I love about this part is the politics and the skill involved in getting people to do what you want. Especially when you try to keep them safe, but no, they won't listen. And that's what Lord Laris excels at. And Aegon is preparing to meet Sir Kristen and head into battle, which would leave him and his kingdom vulnerable. Nobody wants the king to go. So Lord Laris, who looks so different this episode, it feels like they have a new actor, or it could just be me, I don't know. But he sets things up in such a way that he doesn't explicitly tell Aegon not to go. Instead, he gives Aegon a choice that ensures that he makes the right decision, the one that Laris wants him to make. There are diverse rumors whispered on the streets of your city. One such is that your grace sends his forces to battle, and in his courage and wisdom, flies with them. Another is that his grace was outwitted by his counselors and persuaded to fly to war with Sir Criston, so the Queen Alicent may reign in his absence, with Prince Aemond at her side. Who said, of course. Who spreads these lies? Matters little. Tales taken on a life of their own, like weeds, unless they are tended. What well, tend to them, then? And so Aegon doesn't want to be showed up by his brother, but Laris is also planting a seed inside Aegon against his mother and brother, the only other two people that can sway him or have some sort of influence. Freaking snake. And then here's where he just falls into the guy's hands. Funny, considering that the guy likes feet instead. You know what's funny? Someone brought to my attention that nobody likes Lord Laris and they think he is so disgusting because he likes feet, but these are the same people that have no problem with an uncle fucking his niece or brothers and sisters doing each other. But feet, that's not allowed. Lord Laris 
My father always said he had no use for a master of whisperers. And yet, I find myself wanting for one. I should be glad of your talents. You honor me, your grace. Shall we escort you to the dragon pit, your grace? Ah. You know what's also messed up? Lord Laris is probably the one spreading those rumors through the streets. It's like those people who create the viruses just to sell the antivirus software. And because Aegon is inexperienced, he's so easily influenced by all these people around him. I feel a bit bad for him because it seems like he genuinely wants to do the right thing. Like he started off as this horrible little shit. He was a junkie, he was drunk, he was violating women, like doing all this awful stuff. And Sir Otto and people around him were like, okay, listen, you you need to first of all get clean, which I would I thought they were gonna show more of. I wish they would have shown more of that because that was such a blatant thing. Like he still gets drunk from time to time, but nowhere near as bad as he was. So he's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to be a good king, especially since he respected his grandfather. He's trying to ride out to show his strength and, you know, inspire his troops in his kingdom. He doesn't want to be seen as weak, so especially since they just recently took his son from him by chopping his head off and putting it in a bag. However, it kind of is a foolish move at this moment because the dude has no heir except for his brother, who would likely take his place. This makes Aegon worry that if he leaves and something happens to him, Aemond would be the one to rule and he would be better than Aegon. And everyone would remember Aegon as the weak king who died stupidly and made stupid decisions. Man, I love this. I love stuff with decisions. I wish we could have more games like this. I know it's like a broken record I've brought up so many times, but it's like they don't really have much of that unless they're dating games or something. And then even still, the choices never matter. I think mayhaps I shall fly another day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it does seem wise mm -hmm. on reflection. Mm -hmm. You could come out with us, my king. Sir Martin has a new squire that wants bedding in. He's never fucked a woman. But you're sworn to chastity now. <laughs> of course, Your Grace. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> They're like. Yes, Your Grace. They were waiting for the punchline, it never came. <laughs> I love it. You know how awkward it is to be a best friend of the king and never know which day your joke is gonna land wrong and he just lops your head off? Okay, and then after that happens, like you always have to be fake with him. If he challenges you and he's like, yeah, I don't find that funny. I'm like, okay. So now we have to like not actually be funny with you and not know what to do and walk on eggshells with you. I wonder if they're even seriously his friends. Like they feel like they are because they grew up together. At the same time, now that he has power, he could easily kill them if he wanted. You know, they have to pretend to be his friend. Meanwhile, they might secretly hate him and we don't even know. But say what you want about Aegon, right now he is a more feared king than Rhaenyra because he's already shown strength. Even though it might not have been the best move, it's an understandable move. Him catching the rat catchers and did we did people realize he's ready to stand on business. So they know, yeah, let's not mess with that guy because he will burn the entire place down. He will set fire to people, sacrifice people for his cause. And that's kind of scary. Does it make him a good king? Maybe not, but it definitely makes him a king to be revered and respected. So I was wondering the whole time who the hell this guy is, Mr. Witcher the third, who seems to love everybody and everyone seems to know him. And now he's claiming that he's a Targaryen or half Targaryen. Singing my grandson, is that? He's the guy from Our Flag Means Death. Hi. Who was your grandsire? Thousand apologies. Please, continue. No, I, I really shouldn't be telling you this. It could cost me my head. Usually when someone says, I really shouldn't be telling you this, that means they really want to tell you something and they mean to do it anyway. I, I really shouldn't be telling you this. It could cost me my head. You are saying you're a Targaryen. Shh, shh, shh. I'm the son of Balon the Brave. Bastard brother to Prince Daemon and the late King Viserys. My thing is, if he is serious, or even if he's not, why would he spread this knowledge around <laughs> knowing people want to kill him? That's a weird way to live on the edge. I, some people just cliff dive, put their mouths inside alligator jaws, but this guy's like, let me go into a room full of people and start a rumor that's probably untrue so that I can make as many enemies as possible and possibly even the kings. Uncle to the one true queen, Rhaenyra Targaryen. The blood of the dragon runs through these veins, and yes, men would take my head for it. 
A dragon seed must watch his own neck when he has no white cloaked guardsman to do it for him. Ah, uh, that's one hell of a way of watching your own neck by exposing it to everyone. Like clearly this guy must have some kind of ace up his sleeve because other than that, I can't see how he possibly would have thought this was a good idea unless he wanted to get killed or truly live on the edge being hunted for all time. On top of that, in Aegon's kingdom, he says that Rhaenyra is the one true queen. Like, this dude seriously likes to play with death. You do not look very much like King Viserys. Or Prince Daemon. How do you know what they look like? Yeah, he speaks truth right enough. Look, you can tell by his hair. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm their half brother, you yeah, yeah. Right, right. I'll tell you who else doesn't have silver hair. The rightful heir to the Iron Throne, my nephew, Prince Viserys Velaryon. Yo, either he works for Daemon, or he's on their side and he's trying to spread support for Rhaenyra, or he's extremely, god-tearingly stupid. Because, wow, he really is laying it on thick. Like, he's trying to drill into their heads that Rhaenyra is the rightful queen. He's your other nephew. All hail the king! All hail the king! Drinks for all! At the pleasure of the crown! <laughs> Relax. Poor <laughs> dude is terrifying. <laughs> look, I feel like he's a spy or someone who's trying to spread support for Renera. But look at him. He does not want to be doing this. It's like he's supposed to do this for someone else. And just the way he's moving, I just have a feeling. Anyway, the story continues with Aegon trying to help this guy lose his lollipop. Good lord. Okay, I can't fully show it. Damn. But indeed, this woman has an ass on her, man. What is beautiful. Like, I would love to just draw that. That would, that's, that is one hell of a model. It has to be one of the prettiest butts I've ever seen in my life. They probably got models for the brothel scene specifically for this reason. Also, I can't show this either, but I'm surprised that they're able to show someone getting their crotch tooth flossed, but you know, they can't show certain violence. You don't usually see that. I'm pretty sure it's prosthetic or maybe it is. I have no idea. What if it's not? I mean, this is a brothel, so it makes sense that we'd see some of this. So Aegon continues looking for a particular prostitute and he finds her and oh my God, this is one of the most painful scenes I've ever witnessed. <sighs> Poor Aemon gets hazed and like, look, <laughs> I get that Aegon is his big brother and he's drunk, but do you really want to piss off and humiliate the one person you have on your side that has the largest freaking dragon in the freaking world? This dude has a flying Godzilla and you want to piss him off? Did you forget that he's the brother to your big sister as well and he could easily switch sides and fly over there? I mean, they're very family oriented, so I don't think that they would hurt each other on purpose. We see that Aemon still feels very bad about what happened to Luke, but Luke was his half wait, nephew? or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of hard to keep track of the relationships. But I, I felt really bad for Eamon because he walks out of there with his head high and his cock firm looking like Legolas Schwarzenegger and asks, like, he acts as though he's not in love with the prostitute. I know everyone's going to be like, well, whatever he does at this point is justified, but that's his big brother just picking on him as siblings. However, when tensions are high like this, the last thing that you want is to mistreat those that you love. But we all see that Aegon turns into a freaking werewolf when he's drunk. <laughs> so sad bro he's so embarrassed Eamon is so embarrassed oh god I felt so bad for him he's already he's already vulnerable he doesn't like looking vulnerable in front of people and not only is he vulnerable in front of his brother that's one thing but he's showing his brother's friends good thing they're not laughing because Eamon would freaking kill them he would slice them in half oh you can feel it like I can feel it in the pit of my stomach how embarrassing it is <laughs> Eamon the fierce <laughs> you have come so far and and yet you still lie with your very first <laughs> what a fine sweet thing <laughs> did you fuck her like a hound <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not laughing 
laughing because it's funny, but it's like, obviously, Aegon's just making fun of him because he's his brother. Brothers are little shits to each other sometimes. Like, if you haven't seen siblings, they're little shits to each other. I also think that he's intimidated by his brother, so there's a little bit of sibling rivalry going on. But the dude's also drunk. Poor Aemon. You know what? If anything, for me personally, just looking at this from the outside in, it makes Aemon look way more attractive because he's loyal. Okay, she's a prostitute, so it doesn't really count. But the fact that he kind of sort of bonded with his first. Okay, wow, many guys do that, but whatever. Usually the first is, you know, but it means he has a soft heart. Like there's something nice and alluring about a guy that has a really soft heart for a woman that he really likes or cares about and he's loyal to her, but he will burn the entire fucking world, women, men, and children at the drop of a hat. No remorse or maybe remorse, but he'll do what he has to do and he will be ruthless. But that one person that he loves, that's the only person in the entire world that he will never hurt. That to me, like that's that's way more attractive. But to a king, it's like, nah, bro, you're with one woman? How weird are you? <laughs> you see, I do not exaggerate. Such is the madam's prowess that even now my brother will not sample another. <laughs> <laughs> Hard luck for your squire, though. As you can see, she she's now very much occupied. <laughs> your squire is welcome to her. <laughs> One oar is as good as another. Well, um, that... It was, yeah, but very awkward. Very, very embarrassing, horrible situation. His brother treating him like that. How ho horrible. Aegon, like, come on, bro. Get the, get the dude a break. But I love how, I love how, I love how, like, I, I lost my train of thought. Whatever. If it suits your brow, Cole, we will rendezvous with your army at first light. Or if their wine is good, perhaps we'll go after first light. We're exposed. What? Right. Oh. Get to the trees! Good lord, her dragon is beautiful. Oh, I love the dragon design. Man, you look at stuff around you like animals or bottle caps or console controllers and you can just like instantly see a dragon version of those things. Like what if they just turned into a dragon in front of you? What would they look like? I love making dragon versions of things. I made a dragon version of my truck, a dragon version of my dogs, of myself, of my pillow, some of my friends. Now I look back at the scene and you'll notice like I was wondering how she was able to see them and I just now realized her dragon was looking over there and made a noise and there was a reflection and the dragon caught it. The dragon is the one that saw the horses on the ground alerted her to them. Such a good dragon. And it makes sense because dragons, usually flying animals, have very good vision. They have to. So the dragon probably has binocular vision, especially if it has to hunt things from the air, including each other. love how all the dragons sound different. They kind of sound the same. You'll know it sounds like a dragon, but there are different intonations and features in each of their voices that you can tell which one's which just by listening to their voice. That's such good attention to detail. I love it. And stuff gets good, man. Like I really wanted her to burn Sir Cole to the freaking ground, but I didn't want Allison's brother to get hurt. And the part where they're waiting in the forest, it's so suspenseful and tense. Man, it's freaking scary. Imagine if they made a horror movie just based on this. Medieval times, but there's this big dragon thing hunting them. And I can imagine simultaneously how frightening it is for the soldiers and the horses below and how equally frustrating it is for her that she lost them. One thing I'll give Cole is that he spotted everything first and he seemed to have made sure that his men went ahead of him first. See, he waits and goes to the back of the line to make sure that his men get to the trees first and that he covers the rear. Now you see, if it had been Danny Targaryen, she would have burned this entire forest to the floor. Or maybe not, who knows? A good showing, Sir Kristen. I'm in your debt. Oh, please. They know we're abroad, they'll be hunting. And we must move under the trees and by cover of dark starting tonight. And no fucking inns. 
And no fucking queens. And so our badass dragon rider comes back and tells Rhaenyra that Kristen Colon is scouting for a larger army. And I love how poor Rhaenyra is asking her if she's sure that it was Kristen. It's almost as though she's in disbelief that he would be this way. She loved him once and she believed he loved her too, even though he was mad at her, even though, you know, that they had that kind of sort of falling out, which he mostly had. She was amicable. He was the one acting like a little bitch. Even she seems shocked at the level of pettiness that he would do this. You know what would be funny? If he finally gets to have a one-on-one -on -one with her and he's all mad because he clearly is still carrying a lot of anger towards her, which means that he's still in his feelings. And then his simpery comes in full force and it turns out that he was still in love with her the whole time and he was just really butthurt. And then she changes his mind because that's how fickle his mind is. Who knows? Maybe all she has to do is seduce him or say two words for him, give him some closure for his dick to shrivel up and then point in her direction again, especially if Damon has been away. In this situation, would it be okay for the wife to cheat on her husband if it's for the good of the realm? If she knew by seducing this man that she could get him to drop his guard and work against her enemy, and this was to avoid a realm-wide war, you know, it'd be good for the realm, right? Would that be acceptable? Same thing in Damon's situation. I mean, I believe in loyalty, but these people obviously are operating under different relationship laws. At this point, if they came out and made it canon that people were fucking their own dragons, I don't think I'd be surprised. Otherwise, how else would you expect people like Daenerys Targaryen to exist who can't be burned by fire? Yeah, the lore probably says something about, oh, the magic infused with the Targaryen blood. They use dark magic or some type of magic to do it, but I mean... You know what I mean? So everyone's telling Rhaenyra that she needs to act now. They're all hasty and terrified and acting out of fear. And I can see from the men's point of view why they feel this way, but she really doesn't want to start a war if she can avoid it. Her father would have been the same way. So she has this brave idea to set up a meeting with Alicent. Meanwhile, Damon is having nightmares, obviously bothered by his conscience about the little boy that he killed and young Rhaenyra sewing his head back on and poor Damon feels horrible. Then I don't know if this is part of his dream, but Wednesday Adams, the old hag over here is like, you will die in this place. And then she just walks away. Don't know if that's part of his dream or not, but she's so annoying and weird. Hoping Enderman gets you, Steve. Anyway, Rhaenyra meets with Alicent by pretending that she's a nun because that's the only place that Alicent is where she's not surrounded by a bunch of people. I don't know why Alicent annoys me. I always felt as though she wasn't a good friend to Rhaenyra and it probably didn't help that she seduced her father and then stole her throne. But Alicent basically ends up telling her that a war is coming and there's nothing she could do to stop it. Then this is also when Rhaenyra ends up learning what her father actually said right before he died. At times to understand that he spoke Ekon's name. He said he was the prince that was promised to unite the realm. What? I desire peace as you do, but to possess. Did my father use those words? The prince that was promised. Did he? Yes, he did. He spoke to you of the Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> it's a story he once told <laughs> about Egon the Conqueror. Mm hmm. Now what? Look at you. Stupid. Now I'm stupid, huh? I look stupid. That's what you're thinking? You look stupid. Dumb. Hey, and, and look, no returns either. My father has gone from court. Court is on the march, Amy. You know what Amy does? It's too late, Rhaenyra. Alison. Is it just me, or do I feel like Alison could have tried a little harder before everything? I mean, she has Laris, who seems to be shifting fealty to get to Aegon. Everyone's playing their cards, but I feel as though Allison could have been a little bit more motivating. I mean, she could have tried to comfort her son when he was mourning the loss of his child, get closer to him. I mean, I know it's probably not in her nature to do that, but you would think for the good of the realm, she would put that aside. I mean, she was with Viserys and did that for the supposed good of her family. She can't do that for the good of the realm. At least Renera is trying. Allison will say something, you know, and probably think she doesn't have any power, but she does have some element of power because her son's the king. Can she not go talk to him? That was basically an F you to her best friend. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm team Rhaenyra, even though I like Aemon. I hope he joins Rhaenyra. I don't know why for some reason I feel like he's going to. That'd be a great way for him to tip the scales. I could see them doing that at the very end though, if they don't kill him off first, because you know how HBO likes to shock and awe. Excellent episode. They seem to be setting up a lot of what's to come. Stay tuned for the next part of the adventure. And remember, 
when your brother is a good man to you and his dragon is the tractor trailer triple XL engorged to maximum capacity version of every dragon in existence known to man at the moment, you know, maybe, just maybe, let him have his old worn out gushy. Remember, his little dragon matters too, and you probably won't want to see it when it's angry. I mean, I don't know why his brother would see his little dragon while he's angry. That, that'd be kind of freaking weird. But then again, this is the Game of Thrones universe where siblings pack each other, so who knows. I, I really hope they don't go that route, but whatever. Disgusting.